The Library of Babel One of the best illustrations of the uselessness of all information comes from Jorge Luis Borges's concept of a total library, described in his short story The Library of Babel. This library, is described as follows. Quote, the universe, which others call the library, is composed of an indefinite and perhaps infinite number of hexagonal galleries, with vast air shafts between, surrounded by very low railings. From any of the hexagons one can see, interminably, the upper and lower floors. There are five shelves for each of the hexagon's walls, each shelf contains 35 books of uniform format, each book is of 410 pages, each page, of 40 lines, each line, of some 80 letters which are black in color. This thinker observed that all the books, no matter how diverse they might be, are made up of the same elements, the space, the period, the comma, the 22 letters of the alphabet. He also alleged a fact which travelers have confirmed, in the vast library there are no two identical books. From these two incontrovertible premises he deduced that the library is total and that its shelves register all the possible combinations of the twenty-odd orthographical symbols. Jorge Luis Borges in the Library of Babel, 1941 From the provided information, we can calculate the number of books in this library. This total library contains every possible 410-page book, representing every possible arrangement of 25 characters. Each page, with 40 lines and 80 characters, contains 3,200 characters. Each book, with 410 pages, contains 410 times 3,200 or 1,312,000 characters. With an alphabet of 25 characters, this gives 25 to the 1,312,000th power possible books. This number is 25 multiplied by itself over a million times. To put its magnitude in context, the number of atoms in the observable universe is only 25 to the power of 57 or 25 multiplied by itself 57 times. This library, is a great treasure. For in this library we can find every book, article, poem, and novel ever written, or that could be written. We'll find descriptions of every scientific theory, from Newton's Principia, to Einstein's Relativity, to the presently unknown theory of quantum gravity. We'll find blueprints to world-changing technologies not yet invented based on principles not yet discovered. This library possesses the greatest works of literature, the complete works of Shakespeare, Dickens, and Tolstoy. It also has every work yet to be written, the completed Game of Thrones series, as well as the unfinished works of Tolkien, Hemingway, and Twain. The library has the untold histories of every civilization, including civilizations now lost to time. It has the contents of every scroll burned in the fire of Alexandria. The library has biographies of every person who's ever lived, and even biographies of those yet to be born. What could be more valuable than this boundless trove of information, with its complete knowledge, its answers to every mystery, and its articulated solutions to every problem? This is where the equivalence between all information and no information rears its ugly head. It renders the library worthless. There are issues with this library. To start, for every valid theory, technology, history, and autobiography in the library, there are countless others that are subtly wrong, inaccurate, or utterly bogus. Worse, finding any book with more than a few grammatically sensible words is next to impossible. Most books are pure gibberish, or babble, indistinguishable from random sequences of characters. A typical page from a book in the Library of Babel contains English-sounding words but these are no more frequent than random chance predicts. Perhaps all hope is not lost. Since this library contains every possible book, surely this library contains books that serve as indexes to find all the other meaningful, and sensible books in the library. But this dream is also impossible. Given the number of books, 
it's impossible to uniquely reference any other book with a descriptor shorter than the length of the book. Thus it takes all 410 pages to reference a specific book in this library. Due to its completeness, the library itself is the most compact catalog of all the books in the library. In other words, a card catalog of the library would be the library itself. What if we organize the books somehow, such as by sorting them in alphabetical order? Then finding any particular book would be easy. This too suffers from a pathological breakdown. While this makes it easy to find any particular book, the difficulty shifts from finding the book to deciding which book we want to find. This is a consequence of the library having every possible book. As one seeks a book of interest, one is faced with 25 choices, to choose which of the 25 characters is next in the content of the book we seek. During the search, the seeker must choose each next letter, and must do this for all 1,312,000 characters in the book. Thus, finding a book in this library, is as difficult as writing the book in the first place. In a way, we already have access to this library, as we are already free to put down any sequence of characters we want, and thus find a book that is already present somewhere in this total library. Thus, this library provides no new knowledge or information. Its set of all books is as helpful to us as if it had no books. And so a total library offers nothing. It's equivalent to having no information at all. You can explore this frustrating enigma of the Library of Babel. Jonathan Basile created an online version at libraryofbabel.info.